Hiya, and welcome back to Outriders. Today, I'm going to be doing my damnness to talk to my old self. Holy moly. Okay, so in Outriders, when I first started, I got into the expeditions and I finally made it to Endgame and I thought, oh baby, let's get some of those legendaries. Let's see what kind of builds we can create. Let's dig in. But I quickly realized that, man, this, uh... Am I missing something? What's what's going on? Things are like not dying and Jesus, I, I, I haven't even seen a legendary yet. Like I'm not even making a dent. <laughs> so essentially today we're going to be answering the question, how the hell do you progress to world level zero essentially, or expedition level really zero, to expedition level 15? Uh, and oh by god, it is a journey rife with meticulous stat priority, uh, but it doesn't start off that way. Uh, but I would like to also tell you that there are huge, huge things that when you have them, it just nerfs every problem you're kind of having in a big way. Let's talk about it. By the way, I made a video about the trickster uh, and how to progress with the, uh, not trickster, sorry, I keep saying the technomancer. Uh, how to progress with the technomancer. Uh, this is a similar video, except it's going through like the world tier levels and kind of being more broad. Uh, but if you watch that video, you can probably infer a lot of the keys to power, like I mentioned that video uh, in this video. Anyways, just thought I'd let you know, if you watch that one, you may not have to watch this. Love you, let's get back to it. Okay, so how the hell do you progress in Outriders? How do you go from all the way from uh, World Tier 1, or 0, to World Tier 15 and being able to actually experience what Endgame is, aka Eye of the Storm? And this is where, the, in my opinion, this is what the game kind of should be. Uh, but essentially, if you can make it to this point, you're able to do a very, very quick expedition, and you're able to get a pretty decent amount of drop pod resources, and you're able to choose every single time from three types of legendaries. That's amazing. That's really, really good. And you cannot decrease this as uh, this is world level. Uh, but to me, that's amazing. That, that that's a, such a nice thing. Unfortunately, the road to get here is super, super specific and very frustratingly so. What I mean by that um, is the in order to get this. We're going to talk about how the hell you get to this point, but just trust me when I say it's going to be a lot. But if you go slow and you pace yourself and you make sure you aim at the right things uh, at the start rather than later, you'll find this is a quicker process uh, than the people who kind of are just making it up as they go along. So one myth that we're going to quickly try to nip in the butt fast as hell is this. Uh, so uh, essentially, you might be really wanting to progress to your next world level because it's going to eventually get you access to legendaries. And that's one of the biggest, most tantalizing things in Outriders. Well, every single time you get to a new tier, a new world tier specifically in Outriders, uh, it is going to mess up one of the most valuable stats for people who are just starting to progress and just starting to grind and just starting to build their way to the top. Uh, it's going to kneecap that. Uh, kind of. You can reclaim your ground, but it might be a little challenging. It's going to kneecap Santiago, because every single time you increase your world tier, it is going to tell Santiago uh, to basically ask for way more drop pod resources. Now, this is fine if you can easily complete your maximum or second to maximum world tier, because the next maximum will give you the next jump. You wanted the second uh, world tier that you've completed. Uh, it will have like a little pyramid with a plus sign at the top, essentially, telling you that it's going to increase your overall like perceived world level clear uh, which is why it's bad if like people or friends like push you through an encounter because you'll kind of mess up your progress with Santiago just be careful with that just it's just fucking pick on your friends and say you got me here get me out <laughs> in which they'll just have to run end game with you for a couple times so that you can get good gear and we'll talk about that gear in a minute but anyways the reason why Santiago is so good uh, is because there is specific gear in the game that is just it's insane comparatively to everything else like stuff is like you don't consume ammo when you you shoot an enemy and get a critical hit or something but then there's stuff like this where is it this yes toxic shot when you hit an enemy affected by toxin you regenerate 40 percent of your magazine so you don't it doesn't even matter <laughs> what anyways one of the keys to power is unfortunately dark sacrifice this is giving you 75 percent weapon damage all the time forever and takes down a minuscule amount of your health in which, even if you just have base skill tree things like weapon life leech by 5% and you're dealing a shit ton more weapon damage, you're just going to heal for that weapon damage and be A-OK. -okay. It's weird. Um, now, you might be like, okay, well, Grin, that's good for weapon damage, but what if I have an anomaly build or a power build, devastator, this and that? 
Um, there's a weapon for you guys as well. Hopefully I found it. This is an image of it. It's essentially a shotgun that converts anomaly power damage into your weapon damage the same way firepower is converted into your weapon damage. Uh, so that's what you can use. Fortunately, it's only one weapon, but again, you can break down that weapon similar to Dark Sacrifice weapon, which is this one, uh, and put it into both essentially or or whatever weapon you fancy so again if you go to santiago and you see this weapon that it's, it's not here uh we, you'll have to re-roll him once because i think his first roll is all static it's always gonna be the same but anyways if you go into his thing and you don't see any of like that weapon or a weapon called uh kill spree i think i have it actually in my thing it's this one right here if you see this one this is also worth getting uh it can kind of be the it's like kind of like the little brother to to sacrifice dark sacrifice uh, but yeah it stacks it's pretty good unfortunately they don't really stack well together or it's just not as good as just using a very good base weapon and then throwing dark sacrifice on it because there is scaling weirdness anyways but uh yes so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go run expeditions until you can re-roll him now you might be like oh my god it's gonna cost 96 drop pod resources i'm barely ma i'm making like 10 what is that it scales off of your world level, so it won't say this. Uh, it'll probably, it's, it always asks a good bit, like a, a decent amount. Uh, so just be ready for that. It will always ask kind of an annoying, like, ah, I gotta run like three or four runs uh, to be able to re-roll it or something like that. But the reason why that's so good is because especially when you're under leveled, you're not getting legendaries anyway. So this is a way for you to kind of get legendaries. For you to start making a dent and get again if you can get one dark sacrifice you buy that you break that mod down and you throw it into whatever weapon you want even a weapon like this that has skill life leech would just suck up in love <laughs> dark sacrifice and it would make it like 10x better uh, so that can just be a huge key to power it can immediately give you a huge huge edge jump etc and just damage and just nuking things and again same thing for that shotgun that scales off anomaly damage if you break down that a thing and get a perk and then slap it onto whatever you want uh, have fun messing around have all that you'll be good to go now the other reason why it's good is because there are certain set bonuses in the game given what you're aiming for and your build that are insane again i talked about this last part but in this one case it's whenever an enemy's frozen we're getting 90 percent more damage 90 percent more damage that's insane <laughs> that also critical damage on top and also the critical damage is shared with my friends on in co-op what <laughs> that's that's really good there's also stuff like this which uh, again given your build you'll have different options but uh tools of destruction gets your magazine increased or replenished if you're able to activate the pain launcher and get a hit with it so to keep it short and simple you'll need three armor pieces from this so hopefully whilst you're running your expeditions you'll at least have enough power to slowly start chipping away and getting with time uh better better weapons better armor etc having the chance of maybe a legendary every now and again and then also forcing yourself to win uh with santiago re-rolling him and getting hopefully this one or that shotgun okay so that'll take you pretty far that'll also make you feel like okay there's something i'm working towards Ooh, a piece of candy i finally have enough to re-roll santiago and see what else i can get or uh what do you call it get a dark sacrifice and feel like holy shit now i'm able to guarantee myself getting a legendary whilst running every single thing now but let us kind of talk about the uh, stats, essentially, which I kind of mentioned uh, a little bit. Um, but yes, so given your build, given if you're going to go firepower if, or if you're going to go uh, anomaly damage, which essentially is like, do you want to use guns or do you want to use your abilities? Uh, the stat priority are kind of the same. Uh, essentially, you need the first one is either going to be bonus firepower or anomaly damage and maybe if you have a weird build with it functions off of something else with a build that i haven't heard about maybe pyromancer or devastator scales of something else uh know that but largely firepower bonus and anomaly damage bonus are going to take care of you so then the next couple stats are amazing say if you have an anomaly build what's the better stats cooldown cooldown you're going to constantly want to spam with your um, abilities cooldown is fantastic also, having something like Skill Life Leech will keep your ass alive and in the fight. But maybe you want more damage. Maybe you want status power, which will increase all of your uh, your abilities' effects. Awesome. For instance, the Pyro uh, Pyromancer is amazing with status power because all of he all he does is status. He always he just burns people all, all the time. So that's incredible. And now, say if you're a gun build, you're gonna want firepower damage and not anomaly damage. You're also gonna want status power, maybe long range damage to spice things up. You can also use uh, things like cooldown reduction, given it's a part of your build. So, for instance, my trickster could use a lot of cooldown reduction because cold snap is needing a long, long ass cooldown. So that can help that like alleviate that pain in the ass. So you're gonna want to make sure that each 
one of your pieces of gear. And especially when you're just starting out, you're going to have to look at every single blue piece of gear you have uh, and then try to stack the advantage, essentially. Trying to find the, the one piece of gear that has a lot of the stat priority you have. And if you're just getting into the game, you probably haven't looked into this guy this much. Uh, and he does a lot. And to explain it all would be a, just uh, frankly too much <laughs> um now if i had a blue piece of gear here which i don't unfortunately um i could actually increase or improve the rarity so i could bring it to purple now if you can't bring anything to legendary but you can bring blues and whatnot to purple so say if i found like this is a great example firepower damage that's amazing i do a lot of gun gun damage i use blighted blighted uh, rounds fantastic cooldown reduction is also really good because i want to activate cold snap more Skill Life Leech is okay. It's pretty good. I don't think you need any more than like one or two versions on, on your pieces of armor. Uh, given your class, it could be different. For, but for me, my Blighted Turret is always shooting something. So it's always healing me with that. So it's less necessary for me. It could be more necessary for you. And regardless, if I found this and it was a, a blue, you're going to want to improve the rarity. That will help immensely. Also, one thing to note is that these, the mods that you have that have numbers like firepower receive or something like that, scale off of this thing's level, okay? But if you increase the level, which you can do, which it costs titanium and resources, uh, it will actually reset any investments you put into these stats, which by the way, these stats can be improved uh, with this as well. Uh, so this is where like, this is where you kind of need to be at endgame. You need to get a weapon that scales up your damage really, really hard, unfortunately. Dark Sacrifice and the weird anomaly power shotgun thing buffs up your weapon damage or feeds it into a more valuable stat if you're using power, which is nice. But then the next hurdle you have to uh, go, go for is the perfect stat priority. Essentially, always you want to have more of whatever damage deal you're, you're doing. If you're doing a lot of power damage, go anomaly. If you're doing a lot of gun damage, go firepower. Uh, if you have specific cases, uh, weird cases where you need to have your action ability back sooner, then go cooldown. Uh, and then level those up when you can. Uh, you'll always eventually have like a stupid amount, like I have 8,000, 5,000, etc. Uh, with these. So eventually you'll accrue a lot of them. And by the way, every single time you break down something, it will give you potentially uh, firepower uh, bonus shards. Uh, so you'll, again, it's just uh, over time, you'll accrue a lot of these, especially if you're taking break, breaking down blues, you're going to get a lot of these. So to recap, to like run down and everything, the, the, like the progression power loop, essentially, you're going to want to go and do expeditions and accrue drop pod resources. You're going to want to bring those to Santiago and refresh his stat and be careful not to go and keep increasing your world level because you might not be able to do the highest tier or it might be really hard for you to do that tier because you don't have the right weapons. You change out a piece of, a piece of armor, whatever. Uh, so stay one notch above whatever you can do and make sure whatever you're doing is mean like manageable but if you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and then you accidentally push too hard and you struggle like crazy to finish the next expedition world level then that's going to be what you're gonna have to do every single time to get santiago's relevant but anyways yes uh you're gonna want to grind expeditions and then re-roll until you find one of the high value weapons or high value armor uh, legendary armor can be really a pain in the ass to get and it's kind of a way to keep you playing the game because if you're playing really low world tiers and you're just getting really unlucky with drops it can be a pain in the ass but if you're leveraging like 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 improving blues uh hopefully you're finding mods every now and again in your purples you should be good to go anyways so after you're done doing that hopefully you got a weapon hopefully you got some armor pieces uh from re-rolling santiago then you're going to want to start mid-maxing. This is something you can kind of do at the very beginning. But you're going to want to start mid-maxing for relevant gear. Hopefully, you've jumped down the rabbit hole of the Outriders YouTube content creation sphere and seen some builds that you like uh, and seen... Uh, it might be a little disheartening because you, you'll see that you don't have mods yet that you'll eventually come into possession of. But yeah, what you kind of want to look at is what their base priorities are. So firepower bonus, again, like we kept talking about, all those things. And then you're going to want to make sure you find armor that facilitates that. And it's kind of a toss up between people saying that, ah, you should just uh, constantly keep swapping out your armor. Uh, don't worry too much about the mods. It's pretty cheap to throw in a mod there. It only costs like, like a couple, like, yeah, costs like leather, super cheap. Uh, but if you find the perfect piece of armor and you just want to level that up, you can, but it will, re it will recede the bonuses of the shard that you embedded into it. So it's kind of a, a half a double-edged sword a little bit there. So try to put like high damage multipliers like this that really affect your damage high, in a high in a big way uh, on your highest leveled weapon thing. That'll help you greatly. 
Uh, and yeah, that that's kind of like the, the thing. You need a weapon that scales up and does a shit ton of damage, or I shouldn't say a weapon, I should say mod. Then the next step is to hopefully find a decent weapon that has, has high base multipliers, just you'll know, you'll shoot, and an enemy will get eviscerated. It's usually a burst rifle because they just scale harder for whatever reason. Anyways, then the next thing is to get the uh, appropriate armor stats, and then the, that will help you push deep into endgame in which you'll have like a bunch of purples. Uh, and if you're constantly using Santiago's stock, you'll eventually accrued legendary gear that is giving you a set bonus, and hopefully the build that you're, you've planned for is going to essentially take you further beyond... Uh, and then you'll be able to push into endgame because you have essentially have every single damage thing in the right order. I will say, in order to survive an endgame, it's a little it's a little rough. Uh, you need everything in the perfect alignment and it is kind of too much. Uh, yeah, you need like each one of these stats, bonus firepower, you need, you need and you need it to be fully leveled up. Like the difference between 5,000 to 8,000 firepower damage is pretty good. You'll also need to accrue gear that supersedes your damage, like giving you 17 firepower damage just by getting three kills. Uh, it'll stack up uh, beyond that, and it lasts 10 seconds. It's crazy. Uh, and, and yeah, so eventually you'll accrue mods just by playing and breaking down purple and blue gear and such, mostly purple. Uh, and then you'll, again, you'll use Santiago, you'll see a, like a very, like a, I think this perk right here, where is it, my, my boots, yeah. Uh, sharp Eye, again, firepower damage, damage that scales up like that is Worth, it, worth its weight in gold. Uh, so to level up this and to invest into this and to have this is incredible. So even if you just seen these boots, broke down it and then slapped this on top of uh, like itself, which is bloodlust, and then this are basically the same thing. Uh, yeah, you're just gonna have that much more uh, power and damage and firepower, and it's gonna be great. Uh, so that's that's the weird minutia. But again, at the end of the game, you will need all of these unfortunate stats to be in the right alignment in order to progress deeper and deeper and unfortunately way, way deep. And uh, and yeah, uh, again, you'll also usually the, the builds that can last at endgame find a way to break the rules in general, like completely like p keep everybody in a state of ash so that they're can permanently frozen essentially and they can't attack you. So you don't need to invest in HP or healing because you essentially will never get hit anyway. Uh, that way you can fully send damage and uh, kind of uh, kill the monstrously high amounts of HP to enemies that are existing in endgame. Uh, and I don't know, a part of me thinks that just, geez, I don't, like, I want to use these five-star, like, legendary weapons, but I don't think, like, just knowing how tanky enemies are, or know how, knowing how easy that I get one-banged, uh, I don't know if I can, you know? So I hope, I don't know, a part of me wishes Endgame gets tweaked again to where, or maybe you just gotta not, well, no, because if you, by playing at Endgame, you get the best resources, so everyone's incentivized to do that, but then there's no real reason to use those weapons because you can't, because your build's sufficient around having these mods and these critical damage status power and all these things to where it kind of shoehorns you into a certain way of playing still, even though you don't have time net mitigation now. Anyways, sorry, a lot of words there. Again, uh, I would highly advise you find a build uh, from one of the many wonderful content creators and outriders that exist. Uh, it, they could they could have builds that are referring to like old timed content. It still doesn't matter. It, it, it's you think it would matter, but it doesn't because you still need to do so much damage, and you also will still have the chance of getting one bang. So you still weirdly need their build, even though, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're, this is skill priority. It will be different for what you're going for. Uh, again, it's nice to have confirmation that you're going in the right direction if you do want to use an anomaly build for Devastator or a fire, or for like a, a weapon damage build for Pyrokinetic, or Pyromancer, or whatever. So just take that into consideration, essentially. Make sure you know where you're going before you embark, because otherwise you'll spend a lot of time kind of being like, oh god, oh no, I accidentally did the next world tier. Oh, now Santiago is so fucking overpriced. Ah! Uh, Oh god, I can't even do the previous world tier. Ah, <laughs> and it's just a, it's a mess. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been Outriders, and oh boy, howdy, does this game is just woof. Uh, also, again, I will say on just for me, uh, I always knew that like stat priority kind of makes sense. If I am using guns, firepower bonus. If I find myself dying, a little skill life leech, max HP is not worth it because it doesn't really help you deal damage and heal and all these things, and you need to deal damage in any game. But, getting Dark Sacrifice, that weapon, change the game. Change the game immediately, which also frustrates me, because that almost makes it so that you can't use other legendary weapons without it. And even if you do, it's still not as good as a good burst rifle with Dark Sacrifice on it. It sucks, it makes all the other gear kind of meaningless. 
I hope they fix it. I hope they don't. That doesn't mean nerf Dark Sacrifice <laughs> Dark, or the Burst Rivals. That means make the other legendaries have a chance of hitting hard as well. Anyways, <laughs> the scaling in this game is shit. <laughs> it just seems like a lot. Anyways, hopefully that helped. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Again, make sure you use Santiago. That will save you, especially it'll give you the chance, especially when you're just starting out, to have a chance at getting legendaries, uh, specifically the right legendaries like Dark Sacrifice or Kill Spree. Those are the mods. Uh, I don't know what the weapons are called. Look out for those. Anyways, thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, eventually, just by playing and doing the expeditions, you'll accrue mods uh, that are amazing. Ah, fuck. I guess I'll say that real quick. There are certain mods in the game that are broken. Like, just, they don't make any sense why they exist, <laughs> uh, frankly. One of them is this one. Uh, the, the, the one that's below. Mitigation from death. Anyways, killing an enemy while aiming down sights gives you 36% uh, points of armor. That stacks up to three times. That is an insane amount of armor for nothing. For just aiming down sights and killing something. What? <laughs> Jesus. There's also armor like this that's in legendaries, which is insane. Which is increasing. Whenever you kill an enemy that's frozen, it's going to explode uh, with no like time mitigation uh, for 252 damage. What? That's insane. Also, bloodlust. Bloodlust is always really good, especially if you use guns. Well, it's always good if you use guns. Uh, but yeah, killing an enemy, getting a kill, essentially give you 17 damage damage uh or more firepower which will equal it to way more damage and it stacks up to three times so it's way good again the, you, you probably know the meta at this point the weird like bullet meta but essentially tear rounds fire rounds blight rounds toxic rounds whatever uh usually have something like this which is killing an enemy like there's this two star mod or there's a, a class specific mod where it's getting a kill with uh, killing an enemy re regenerates a bullet or 40 percent of the magazine which is like this which is crazy uh, so there's a way to hyper stack your thing. Again, this is just nice. Blight around. Uh, I if I mess up and I bottom up my mag and I have to reload, I don't. I'm not losing out on all my AOE damage. I just get another clip, which is really nice. Again, we're constantly dealing damage to frozen enemies and cold or long winter does not give justice to how much range this gives cold snap. It's insane. But yeah, again, mitigation from death slapped on anything that has a higher, the highest level you have and it will give you a shit ton of armor. I still think enemies just somehow out of nowhere deal like a demonstrous amount of damage. I think it's because their, their melee attack technically clips through you six times and like does 50 hits in one hit. Uh, I think, but that could just be me because I find that like sometimes an enemy can hit me and I feel nothing and then other times I'm instantly dead. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that helped. Uh, this is the video that I'm kind of making to my older self. Make a plan. Go to, to the Outriders YouTube bar and type in build. Find a build from for your class, whether it be a, a fun anomaly build, a gun build, follow it, uh, know what you're aiming for at the very least utilize Santiago now to give you the weapons that are defining endgame unfortunately like dark sacrifice kill spree and the shotgun that scales up anomaly uh, based off of your anomaly damage uh and then uh work towards stat priority look at blues uh get the right stats that are f sufficient to your build and what kind of damage you're dealing uh and then be done uh, or then then more min maxing and more mod acquisition and uh, wish hope for the best <laughs> and then try to throw a few legendary set bonuses on your armor and you'll be good to go uh well maybe not because end game still requires you to get a lot of damage and honestly you sometimes still get one shot because uh, you maybe you're just an enemy snuck up on you and you're like all right well my build doesn't really facilitate around mass aoe or something you know anywho good luck genuinely good luck this is a slow road but if you aim properly, it can be a little less slow. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day. We do stream a lot. Sometimes Outriders, sometimes not. Uh, hopefully I can see you there. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, also, if you engage with the video and all, thank you. <laughs> and goodbye.